this way, maybe. Uh, welcome to the 133rd Berlin, of oh, 233rd Berlin Town meeting. Uh, I'm your moderator until halfway through, and then you may elect another or not. Uh, this is the, we're, we start with the pre-town meeting, so it's not, this is an occasion for motions to amend or otherwise. We're here to listen to many of the people who have request, whose organizations have requested money. And uh, so I, in order to start c correctly, I think it's important to know that these pre-town meeting and the town meeting itself is for uh, residents, but we welcome non-residents. We just want to know who you are. So when you stand to talk, and we have one uh, microphone, so you'll come up here. Would you please identify yourself, and if you're not a resident of the town, say so. Would that be agreeable to everybody? Does anyone have any prejudice to keep these people from telling us what we need to know? Anyone? Okay, it's time to start. If you will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, it's on this corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, I will try to speak louder. Uh, turning to the warning, uh, these are articles that are to be voted by Australian ballot. And uh, we'll start with Article 1, which has uh, the candidate or the vacancies, which would be filled by candidates. If there is a candidate for the select board member for a three year term, I would invite that person to come up and speak or not. All right. Mr. Moderator, there is uh, one candidate, Carla Nuiso. She is unable to be here today. Okay. Can you repeat that? Uh, Car uh, Carol? Carla. Carla Nuiso is a candidate, but she couldn't be here today, so she would have spoken right there. How about candidates for the uh, one year term? There's two vacancies. Moderator. I'm Troy Nelson. I'm currently serving a one-year term on the select board and would like to continue for another year on the select board. Thank you. And uh, is there another candidate here that would speak to that? No. Mr. Staub, no. would you like no. to speak about no, I was not running. You're not running? I am not running. Okay. Article 2 is the uh, town budget. It asks, shall the town appropriate four million five hundred and fifty-eight thousand, there's a number missing there, but at least two hundred and seventy-six for necessary town expenses for the period July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. This would be a good time for you to ask questions of the select board as to their premise presumptions and intentions, and uh, if a member would like to speak about it, that would be good. I, no? I wasn't going to stand up, but that last round didn't go too good, so maybe I'll do this. We tried having a uh, PowerPoint presentation, but uh, as you can see, the screen is not very bright, but there are handouts on the second table there that... Maybe, Tom, if you could distribute uh, them to everybody. I'll, I'll give uh, a couple minutes for uh, those who distribute before I start in.
Anybody else want a copy of the presentation? <coughs> Did Corn get one? Documents, Tom. There's two other documents on the table. One on the post office, one on the land sale. You just start distributing those. Okay. This presentation is also on the website, and there's also a narrated uh, YouTube video on it in case you have insomnia tonight. Uh, the budget this year was very challenging. Uh, we're all faced with the pressures of inflation and the town being particularly hit with the uh, July flooding, uh, which left us with a lot of road damages over, you know, close to 30 roads being damaged one way or another. Uh, four of them still having significant damage that needs to be repaired. Uh, one being closed until um, those repairs are actually made. Uh, not knowing what the full extent of those damages are going to be, uh, we're trying to figure in, um, you know, uh, some reserves because FEMA does not cover 100% of the flood damages. Uh, they do expect a local match uh, anywhere from 10 to 25%, depending on where the actual damages end up. Uh, so trying to, uh, you know, prepare for that. Uh, we set aside $400,000 uh, in that uh, in that fund. Uh, you know, we're, we're hoping is a worst case scenario for the flood damages, but that increases our budget by about 10% right there in that one line item. Uh, so as the warning stated, uh, we're looking for $4,558,276 in expenditures this year. Uh, which is an increase of $471,325, or 11.5% uh, increase over the current year budget. And we do recognize that this is a huge increase, and we worked very hard uh, through several meetings to try to reduce this amount as much as possible and to re reduce the effect on the tax rate as much as possible. And we think in the end we've come up with a very uh, responsible, reasonable budget that preserves town um, services uh, but has the minimal effect on the tax rate as we can. Uh, just to note that without the flood increase, uh, the actual increase of the budget is only $71,325 or 1.7%. So we were very reasonable and responsible in the other areas of the uh, town expenses. Uh, the next slide, uh, FY25 budget highlights. Uh, as I said before, $400,000 of this increase is, uh, you know, proposed for repair to the roads and infrastructure that will not be reimbursed by FEMA or the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, this includes the Payne Turnpike North collapse, uh, you know, which is an extended closure. Uh, the Richardson Road culvert, uh, which we currently have a temporary a uh, logging bridge across so uh, people on there do have access. Uh, we have a, junk, a culvert on Junction Road and also one on Darling Hill Road. Uh, there will also be a separate article on today's warning uh, giving the town uh, possible borrowing authority for these expenses. Uh, I would say it's a worst case scenario, but in the, here again, if we needed to do this to minimize the effect on the tax rate in the end. So are you saying that the budget does include the expenses, or is it not? I don't understand the bonding. The, the budget does at this point include the 400000 for the expenses, because for, for the road expenses, uh, because we will have to expend those funds this year. Uh, we may lessen the effect on the tax rate by going out to bonding, um, but that won't be a decision made till as we get closer to uh, the summer and these actual projects starting, taking a look at the interest rates and stuff. 
But we are proposing to spend the 400000 this year, which is why it's in the budget. Okay, so, so I think what you're saying is if we approve the budget and we approve the bonding, then the select board will decide which path to take, and they will have both options available to them. Exactly. And they'll take the one that makes the most sense based on a conversation that you'll have at some point in the future. Correct. Exactly. So basically what uh, Matt was saying was that, um, like I said, these $400,000 is in the budget for next year because we are expecting to spend those funds this year. But when we get closer to setting the tax rate, uh, this will give us some options uh, as to which way to go, which will lessen the effect on the tax rate itself. And I do have a couple slides on the tax rate for the back, uh, which I think will kind of uh, help uh, alleviate some people's concerns. Uh, but, you know, we do hear about the school tax rate, and I don't want to get into that, uh, but we are very cognizant of that and, you know, want to minimize, um, you know, the, the effects on that as much as we can, but we still have to do our own town services. Uh, on the next slide, uh, town employee benefits. Uh, we are looking at a 3% uh, increase in uh, wages for non-union town employees. Uh, this came in just under the inflation rate for 2023, which was 3.4%. Uh, I'd like to tie the uh, increases to the inflation rate and came in just a little bit under, um, and, I, and I feel good with that. The union, the police department union, increases 4.5%, and that is based on the union contract uh, that was negotiated and runs through June of 2025. Uh, sorry? Is the, are the police the only union? That's correct. The police department is the only uh, union employees in the town. Why didn't we increase the non-union employees to at least the rate of inflation? Why did you underfund them? Mr. Town? Look. Even though we were, we were uh, worried more about the ability for the town folks to afford their taxes. Um, we looked at it. We thought that the uh, at least keeping it near the uh, level of inflation for that year was uh, the best thing to do. I don't know if uh, anyone, any, uh, Flo or Joe? I think that speaks to it very well. It was a difficult budget to look at this year. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike. Yeah. Here. No, no, oh, that's very kind. Thank you so much. I think what Brad said is spot on. It was a difficult budget that we were looking at this year, and we did have to make other cuts. So we felt that that percentage was the best that we could do at this time. That's not to say that it wouldn't be higher or different in another year. It's unfortunate that you have this style of town meeting where we cannot make a motion to improve, to uh, increase that funding, I would like to suggest that you heartily consider paying the non-union people what they deserve. I respect your years. views. Thank you, sir. I respect your views and I'm glad that you're bringing them forward. That's how we can look at things differently as we go forward. So I really appreciate that. Joe, would you like to speak as well? I don't know if I really have much to add to that. I'll get tangled up. And, and I, I fully agree with you uh, on that as far as giving um, the non members, non union members, an increase. Um, and, and I think later on in, in the season, we might find some extra money that might be able to. I mean, no, we, we're not going to have the ARPA money. Um, I think that's going to be spent even though we have some still on hand. Correct. And we have used our money to give um, bonuses out to different positions in the past. Um, that, that's still an option. But, 
Uh, forgive me, uh, I'm getting a little tired and I'm going to sit for the, uh, for the rest. Um, the next big area of increases is in the insurance increases. Uh, we're figuring in a 10% uh, increase in the health insurance, which is something that basically affects everybody. You know, this is not uh, unusual to the town. Everybody in their, you know, their own personal health insurance is seeing uh, these double-digit increases every year. Uh, we are also seeing a large increase in vehicle and liability premiums from our insurance carrier, which is Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns. And in some areas, it's going up uh, by, by about 50%. So overall, for all the insurance for the town, we're going from 659000 to 746000 for all the insurances for the town next year, an increase of $87,000. Uh, capital budget and debt service. Um, these, you know, capital budget, I say, is a uh, fancy term for uh, big ticket items, and we'll have plenty of discussion on this uh, throughout the other articles um, this morning. Uh, but we're looking at $250,000 towards a new highway loader that is needed. Um, and we're going to pay for this with uh, reserved funds, you know, funds from previous years that were not expended. Uh, so this will not increase the tax rate. Also, we're looking at $55,000 for a new police department cruiser. And, and both of these will be to replace existing equipment. These won't be adding uh, new pieces to our inventory, and this will be paid for with ARPA funds, uh, which also will not increase our tax rate. Uh, then we've also set aside $15,000 in ARPA funds uh, to replace the town hall furnace, uh, which is getting to the point uh, where it's in bad shape and difficult to find um, parts uh, when things uh, break on there. Uh, now, not technically part of, you know, the voting uh, item, uh, but take a look at where we're expecting to receive revenues from in the town next year. Um, each year we receive about a little over $500,000 um, from different sources. From, we, we receive state payments for the roads. Uh, we receive pilot pro pilot payments, which are payments from nonprofit and state agencies who do not pay the traditional property tax, but they still pay make a payment to us. Uh, town clerk revenue, uh, you know, when you get a birth certificate or marriage certificate, dog license, uh, you know, uh, record a uh, real estate transfer. Uh, some of that money goes to the town. So conservatively looking at about $519,000 uh, this year, which is generally in line with previous years. Uh, use of reserve funds, and this is money that uh, was reserved from previous year's expenditures. Uh, we are looking to apply uh, to the tax rate this year, and that amount is $313,000 and the use of ARPA funds, not just for the police department but, and the uh, furnace, but also for the uh, remaining undesignated ARPA funds brings in another $115,000 of revenue. So we're anticip <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so anticipating the total non-property tax revenues for the town uh, being close to $950,000, which is just under 25% of our total budget. Now, the actual uh, use of these funds will be decided in June when we set the town tax rate, uh, but this is just some of the uh, estimates we're looking at at this time. Uh, next couple of slides are a couple of the major budget areas and, and budget by department. Uh, let you take a look at those on your own. And last two pages, uh, you know, putting everything all together, what does this mean in the end? Uh, so if our town budget is $4.5 million, uh, if all the special appropriations today pass, including the fire department, that would be another $517,000, which means that we need to raise $5 million and 75000 almost $5,076,000. Uh, $5 
Subtracting out the previously anticipated revenues of $950,000 means that we need to raise over $4.1 million in property taxes. With our current grand list of $5.3 million, and this will change, uh, we actually go by the grand list as of April 1st, so, there, so that could change up or down, gives us an anticipated tax rate of 0 0.7721. Our current tax rate is 0.7574, which gives on a $250,000 house uh, $1,893 for your municipal property taxes. With the estimated tax rate of 0.7721 on a $250,000 house, the municipal taxes will be $1,930, an increase of $37 for the year on your municipal taxes. I think I think this is uh, in the end uh, pretty much what everybody you know everybody wants to hear as minimal impact on the tax rate as as we can make and still provide for the town services. Any other questions? Uh, and Donnie from Northfield, thank you for your uh, more flexible uh, roles here, um, along with Ken Dustin. I'm your uh, state representative, and I just wanted an update. As of yesterday, the Budget Adjustment Act was passed, and we recognize it's a drop in the bucket, but in terms of the reference to the flooding repairs, um, based on the extent of damage per town, there is an allocation to help with those costs that were not covered by, uh, for instance, by the, the FEMA funds. And for uh, Berlin, that's, uh, that amounts to uh, $84,000. Thank you, Ann. That is great news. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Matt? Uh, so, thank you, Trevor, for putting this together. I think it's very clear. I've never understood uh, on, on the second to last slide where you say the grant list is a certain amount, the amount that's needed, and you see now clearly that that leads to the 0.77. I've never seen that laid out before, so thank you for that. Um, I guess I'd say I appreciate the select board saying it. there were difficult decisions, and it was a hard budget, and so on. So forth, without meaning to draw attention to things or make things political or contentious, I think it's interesting to know what didn't make it in. What, what were the two or three or four things that you wish you could have done, but you decided not to, or there was pressure to do it, or put it off? Because what you're saying makes a lot of sense, but I don't quite know what's on the edges that got pushed away. Do you know what I mean? So, could you tell us a little bit about what is it? Uh, two big areas we did cut is I had proposed in my draft of the budget uh, about $20,000 for a part-time economic development person uh, to, to assist with the Economic Development Commission and to uh, be making improved outreach to the businesses in town. Uh, you know, I've kind of taken some of this on myself, uh, you know, taking on this position as interim town administrator. Um, I've been trying to welcome new businesses. Um, I've done a very poor, poor process so far at highlighting businesses on our town website, uh, so please don't go look at that yet until I can make some fixes to that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, in the past we've had a very active economic development committee. Uh, they, they are active again and, uh, you know, trying to welcome new businesses. Uh, one, one of the simple things I did uh, with the 802 Subaru dealership and their um, uh, remodeling uh, this fall, uh, it's a very beautiful building if you've not uh, had a chance to look at it yet. Uh, but I sent them a letter on behalf of the, of the town on, on some nice quality uh, bond paper, not the, you know, the cheap, uh, you know, uh, photocopy paper, uh, just congratulating them on, uh, you know, on, on their accomplishment. And uh, Dave Birmingham, the, the owner, he received that letter, and I went to the grand opening, which was, you know, a couple months after I sent this letter, and he was very appreciative. Uh, he remembered the letter, he remembered I was the one who sent it, and he was very appreciative of that. So I'd like to continue those efforts in the future with the town. Uh, the businesses and the commercial 
uh, properties are doing a great service to the town. They're really adding to the grand list and the services we have in the town. And I want to say that we as a town acknowledge that. And, and we'll have another opportunity uh, this morning to talk more about that with, with one particular project. Uh, you know, and I'd like to say we're, we're business friendly here in Berlin and, and um, uh, I'd like to continue that. Oh, another area, uh, and I'll let Flo maybe speak on this, is we did cut some uh, road paving this year. We cut uh, Pine Hill Drive, uh, which I let Flo take the heat on that, uh, if she wants to add anything to that. Uh, it's, it's one thing that we already pushed back from this year, uh, paving up Pine Hill Drive, and we delayed it another year, which is going to get into the issue of the options tax. I don't want to get into that too much right now, but uh, I want to get away from deferring maintenance and upgrade to our roads, um, you know, and that was one cow shoot this year. I don't know, Flo, if you want to add anything on the Pine Hill paving? No, no. Thank you very much, Tour. And I would be remiss if I didn't at this point thank Tour for everything he's doing for the town. It's tremendous, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. In terms of Pine Hill, I live on Pine Hill Drive, and it was a very difficult budget. And we can go into the various avenues that we had to cut. Uh, there was the funding for Pine Hill and improvements to the paving, but we decided to put that off. So it won't happen this year. And I made the joke that I hope my neighbors like me as much as I think they do. Um, and so basically, that will happen in the future, but I felt that we could bypass that this year to help the budget overall. So we did cut that for this year. Thank you. Flow. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. And, and I, uh, I don't necessarily care what road we don't pave, but every time we don't pave a road, it just becomes worse. Um, we, we have a lot of paved roads out there. I don't care if it's Airport Road. There's over 2,000 cars a day. Um, I think, air, no, sorry, that, yeah, that's Airport Road. Scott Hill is somewhere around 1,500. You know, this isn't just our people, our town residents driving these roads. These are the um, people from outside the community. And, and if you look at, I'm going to say Scott Hill, there's a lot of alligator cracking. You can't just pave it and make it look pretty because that's only going to come back. Um, there's a lot of sub-base work that needs to happen. And when we push this off, which unfortunately it, we had to on the paving projects, um, it's just going to come back to be more expensive the following years. So um, as much as we may have helped the budget, I don't necessarily think we helped our roads. Any other questions on Article 2, the town budget? If not, let's go on to Article 3. Shall the town charter be amended as follows? Section 3.2, powers of the town, addition of paragraph D as follows. The town of Berlin Select Board may assess a 1% sales tax. The town of Berlin Select Board may assess a 1% room, rooms tax, probably. The town of Berlin Select Board may assess a 1% meals and alcohol beverage tax. D2, a tax imposed under the authority of this section shall be collected and administered by the Department of Taxes in accordance with 24 VSA section 138. And finally, D3, revenues received through the imposition of the tax imposed under this section shall be designed for capital projects within the town. <coughs> One of the select board members want to introduce this otherwise benign subject. I think this leads right in off of what I was talking about Pine Hill and what Joe also said about it gets more expensive. The longer you put something off, prices are going to raise and things are going to become more expensive. That was the way it was when I was at the Agency of Transportation. Any projects that we were looking at, we knew it was going to get more costly as time went on. I'm a huge proponent of the local options tax and I think it will really help Berlin tremendously. I realize that it's going to impact on all of us when we're buying things, but even folks from other towns, and I've been speaking with people who are concerned, if they live in Barrie, say for example, and they come to Berlin, and they're 
purchasing items, etc. They're going to pay the extra tax. However, there's many local towns that already have imposed the local option tax, Barry being one of them, Montpelier. It has been in many towns throughout Vermont for a very long time, and Berlin has tried numerous times. And I have said that, um, in my opinion, the fourth time is the charm. So we have tried three times here in Berlin, and I do believe that it will pass this time. And I do believe that it will truly help us going forward with the budget, with projects, and I'm going to let other board members explain as well. Would you like to, Joe? Add on? Sure. Thank you. I should move my seat. We could do that. Uh, no one wants to hear taxes. I'd love to have a different name for this local option tax. Um, but like Flo was saying, Central Vermont and Berlin community is, is a hub, the central hub for Vermont. A lot of people traveling in and out. We're using all these services. I don't care if it's road crew, your PD, EMS, whatnot. Um, and, and so the, the infrastructure, and I'm, and I'm all about the roads myself, um, is all up to the town residents to, to be paying for the upkeep. Um, I believe that uh, probably one of the biggest infrastructures or assets to the town of Berlin, people will talk about maybe the, the, town, um, the town center. What I'm saying is your back roads. I'm going to say probably about 80% of us live on a back road, and we should have like a back road rehabilitation program. But we can't fund it. That's, that's the problem with that. Um, and I guess all I'm just going to do, I'll, I'll finish up by just saying I'm, I'm in favor of it, and I will be supporting it. I'm like everybody else. When I first heard of the options tax, I was just absolutely appalled. I'm like, what are you thinking? Another tax? More taxes on us? We're taxed enough already? And then I started looking at what the local options tax actually is and what it will do for the town and my impact on me. And uh, let me just kind of put it this way. So, you know, we mentioned before uh, that we're going to, you know, we're looking to buy a $250,000. Uh, loader for the highway department this year. Do you want to buy that loader for $250,000? Or would you like to buy the exact same make and model, all the same features and everything for $62,000? That's what the local options tax would do. Uh, because the estimates from the state tax department is that 75 to 85% of this tax is going to be paid for by out-of-town residents who are currently receiving all the benefits of the town but not contributing financially in any way to the town. You know, all the town expenses, you know, like I laid out, that are paid for with property taxes are only paid for, you know, by the Berlin property owners. This is a way to spread that tax burden out uh, among um, everybody who benefits from those services and lessen the needed work we need to do on the town roads and equipment and everything else, um, but put it on this way. As far as the, you know, look at it this way as far as the impact on me, um, as many of you know, because you've seen me there, you know, if I go out uh, once a week for pizza and, and buy a couple beers, uh, my tab comes out to 20 bucks for that night. Uh, if passed, that local options tax will add 20 cents to that $20 bill. Definitely doable. If I do that every week, every week for a year, um, I spend just a little over, you know, 10 bucks, 11 bucks for the whole year for the benefit of the local options tax. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I wanted to add two things. For anyone that doesn't know, we have everything regarding the local options tax on our website at the Town of Berlin. The staff have done a tremendous job putting that all there, so feel free to look at that. And I'm going to do something that doesn't necessarily, you don't see it at town meeting every day or someone giving this information, but I'm going to be around all weekend. I'm very approachable, as are all of the board. 
but if you'd like to write down my home phone number and my cell phone number, you're welcome to call me over the weekend if you have any questions, concerns, or even into Monday or Tuesday. So my home number is 802-552, 802-552-5500. And my cell phone is 377-1589. And I welcome you to call. I would love to talk with you about it. And as I said before, I'm a huge proponent. The only other thing that I will add is to make sure you know that we would use those funds that we receive for capital projects. And you would know about them before they happen in terms of we would be bringing that before you. It's not that we're going to take the money and just use it for anything. We'll be looking at that long and hard and it will be for big items, uh, whether it's equipment or police cruisers, etc. Thank you. Ma'am, I don't know that I can reach you. Oh, I up. Why, why don't you tell me your question and I'll repeat it. My name is Sister Laurie Seaver and I am a resident of Berlin. Good. When, uh, when I buy something through the mail, I get charged a 7% tax, and that's because my post office address is in Barrett. So uh, we're already paying it in, in, in that particular situation, and I was curious to know, does that 1% that I pay ever make it to Berlin? It's an excellent question. Uh, I'll let you repeat the question, too. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Sister. So the question basically is that Sister pays already 7% to the town of Barrie when she purchases online. And she wants to know if her purchases going forward, if the local options tax is passed in Berlin, would that 1% make it to Berlin? So this is something that we've been discussing regarding the local options tax and where people reside as they purchase items. I planned last week to call the tax department, but unfortunately I didn't find the time. Um, I do still plan to call the tax department and have that conversation with them. I want to just add one thing and then I'll go forward. As Tour mentioned, the local options tax will be managed through the state tax department, so it will not be additional um, resources at our town offices, and I think that's really good. Um, so basically, we are not totally certain, as in myself, until I speak with the tax department. But it does correlate with that we want Berlin to have its own um, post office, per se. We used to have a post office many years ago. And in terms of your question, I don't have the exact answer right now, although TOUR may have additional information. It is something that I know that we've been researching further. Right now, that 1% goes to Barry. And yes, it would be very nice if it was able to transfer to Berlin. Thank you. Anything else on the charter change? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, I'm Theron. I'm a resident, also a member of the Planning Commission. Um, I just wanted to speak in support of the local options tax. Um, I know nobody really likes taxes. Uh, I think a lot of that is about not really knowing where it's going. And I think the big benefit of this local options tax is that it's specifically set up to pay for those capital improvements, maintain our roads, which clearly we you know, don't have enough money for right now as we're deferring it you know, year after year. And um, <clears throat> having some of the visitors that we have come to town, um, wear and tear on our roads, that kind of stuff, to that budget for those improvements and those repairs is, uh, is really important, and I think that this is a great way of addressing that. And so I'll be in support of that, uh, that local options tax, as well as uh, advocating for the uh, Berlin Post Office zip code to make sure that we do get those, um, those funds that, that we need to, to repair our roads and, and keep our infrastructure running. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the or, uh, chart? Marty? Um, I'm going to come down here. Soon. Sure. Um, 
So, good morning. So I'm Matt Levin. I'm a Justice of the Peace, um, and I, for better or for worse, am also a lobbyist. So I work on legislation for a living. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at D3 on the article. Um, and so I have two questions about this is sort of a technical question, Tor. So um, the, this is the language that gets to what we were just talking about, that the money, and that Theron just spoke to, that the money raised from this would go to capital projects. I, I, clearly, that's the intent. So I, I, don't, I, think, I think we can trust you all that that's the plan. I, I'm curious, though, if there's a typo in here, and I'm also curious about how this would actually work functionally going forward. So it's, it says, shall be designed for. Is that supposed to say designated? Yes. And does the actual legal document that is on the warning say designated? I'm not trying to stop things. I just want to make sure that what we do works. So that I'm not, I, I actually am not sure how I think about this. So I'm not doing, I'm not asking this question to try to gum up the works. But I, I believe the intent is designated. What's the actual, what's important is what it says in the ballot. Yes, that's why I said the legal. I, 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 I suspect it may be the case that in the document that some of us are looking at in the town report, it may be a typo in here, not in the actual legal document. But what does the actual legal document say? I've not actually seen the ballot Because I don't vote it. I don't vote it. What was the answer? The language is the same. Same word. The, the clerk is saying that the language is the same. I see her not. Okay. But there is, you know, the opportunity, as you know, there is the opportunity to fix this. Will, if passed, this will have to go through the legislature, and there's the opportunity to fix it there. There is indeed. So, for, for the, the way, may I explain? Did, did you, yeah, did you, so, did you so, yeah, I'll repeat. So, the way that the state law works in Vermont, uh, and for that you can speak to our legislators, uh, the way that the state law works in Vermont is that towns are not allowed to change their own charters without approval by the state legislature. So, when we pass something on our ballot, it then goes to the legislature for their approval. And they can change what we voted on before they pass it, which doesn't happen very often, but it does occasionally. And in situations like this, where there's a technical correction, they can fix it and you know, perfect it is a term that's often used in the legislature. So we might need to work with the legislature if this were to pass to do that. So the second thing is related to that, um, while I clearly understand that this is the intent, what is the actual legally binding way? Because this is not, it's not, this isn't put into a separate fund, right? It's not put into a separate account. So I understand that this is the intent, but is it up to us as the voters of the town to pay attention to what's happening to make sure you're following this intention? Or what are the guardrails here to make sure that this were to actually happen? Again, not suggesting that anyone who's sitting here has any other intention, but in 15 years, when all of us are doing other things, who, what is it that's going to say to the people in charge of the checkbook, no, 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 you can't spend it on a new improvement to the ice rink, although that would be a capital project. You can't spend it on new health care benefits for the police officers, even if we think they deserve it. You have to spend it on the improvements to the ice rink. What, what is it that's going to say you have to spend on, on capital projects? Besides just everyone knowing that that's what's supposed to happen. And everyone may decide it's okay, it doesn't matter, but it's just, if all that it says here is you should, we should know that that's all that it says here is that you should, and there's nothing else that actually puts guardrails around it. Right? Have an answer? Well, I think that's why, uh, you know, we go through the process every year of adopting a town budget. Uh, these expenses will still be subject to that, uh, to the voter approval as part of the town budget. Um, you know, this year I tried doing a little bit more outreach. I don't know if anybody's looked at it. 
Uh, you know, the line item budget, well, in addition to being in the town report here, it is on the website. Uh, the, like I said, the uh, budget presentation is on the town website. And in future years, you know, assuming I'm not going to be here, but, you know, hopefully this continues and it gets expanded. I know this was just the first time, you know, it's kind of lame this year, I'll admit that. But in the future, hopefully it gets expanded with, you know, more people being more uh, savvy with uh, social media and, and websites and stuff. Can do an even expanded version of this. Um, one thing to do differently, I would like to have started this a whole lot earlier. Uh, getting the information out on the website and front porch form and make, you know, bring it out to you as the voters that this is what we're looking, you know, this is what the money we have available from the options tax, this is what we're looking to spend it on as part of the capital budgeting and we'd like to hear from you as early as possible, not just at town meeting, if, you know, yay or nay on that. That's the whole purpose of the taxpayers, yes. I, I think if I think, I think what you've done this year with the presentation is excellent. And I think if, if this were to pass and it does go forward, that if you put something like this in next year's presentation to set the precedent and make it clear that that's what the expectation is, then that sets a good pattern for going forward so that people will expect to see it and that, that people can look for it. So thank you. I, I think, yeah, um, I think... Uh, I think being able to show, you know, exactly where this money is being spent is going to be helpful. You know, not just what we anticipate spending the money on, but, you know, looking for the, you know, for the coming year and future years, what we're looking to spend this money on. I think it's going to be helpful. One of the things I've been harping on, and Tom knows this ever since I, you know, took on this position in July, is uh, capital improvement planning and uh, looking, you know, to plan out how we're spending these long-term projects. Instead of just picking out each year what road we're going to pave and then pushing it off and pushing it off again, having a long-term plan for what roads we're going to pave, what roads we're going to do, you know, other type of improvements on, what culverts we're going to upgrade, uh, what gravel roads we're working on, improving drainage and everything, not just throwing some gravel down and grading it and moving on. Um, so I, I took a huge step on this sir, uh, last month. I put in an uh, RFP request for uh, proposals for a long-term capital improvement plan. Uh, proposals were due yesterday, and we did receive two proposals. Uh, so I'm uh, excited about moving forward with that process. I know some people in the past have mentioned we need to do a better job planning for our roads and stuff. I totally agree, and I think that will be one of the benefits of this, that we can incorporate with the local options tax, how they work together, how we're going to spend this money. I also wanted to add that I really enjoy being on the select board and I plan to stay on the select board if everyone so chooses going forward. I have two more years in my current uh, select board role and I will be looking at things very closely. The budget this year, um, I feel that the whole board looked very closely at everything and we will going forward if this passes. The other thing that I just wanted to add and thank you Theron too for speaking and also Matt for bringing your questions forward and putting that out there. I have great faith in the legislature and I do believe this will pass this time, um, not to sway you one way or the other, but I really wanted to add that one of the concerns that was brought to me was that the state will receive 30% of whatever is brought in from the local options tax if this passes in Berlin. And the person that mentioned that to me was concerned that the state would receive 30%. I myself am not concerned because I look at it this way. Berlin will receive what will help us going forward and the state is the overarching just as Pat explained. You basically, everyone needs the help right now and the state is going to run the program for us and there's so many programs that need assistance. So to me, that 30% that the state will keep from the local options tax is well received. Thank you. Last chance on three, sir. Uh, the estimate that we received 
for how much we're going to receive, does that include 30% deduction? In other words, you, you've got a number that says we're going to get this much. Does that take into account that deduction? Yes. Apparently it does. Yes. Yes? Yes. 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 Article 4. Oh, man. Just a clarification for folks. It was reference made to the fact that the legislature has to approve charter changes. And people may know there's a deadline each year for when bills have to be introduced. Uh, and, and brought before a committee and go over to the other side, which has, you know, is basically passed, there is an exemption to that rule for requests from towns for charter changes. So this would not be delayed because of that deadline. They are addressed uh, right away when they are requested by a town. Thank you, Ann. Article 4. Shall the town sell... 1.5 acres of town-owned property located at 108 Shed Road to Jerry Montpelier, Inc. for a purchase price of a million dollars. Someone want to talk about that? Thank you. I'd also like to invite uh, Karen Whitman from Gary Hotels, uh, who's with us today. Um, go ahead and come on up, Karen. Uh, she is an out-of-town resident, so I will let you do your... Legal it's mumbo jumbo. Pre-approved. Pre okay, better yet. Always <laughs> <laughs> um, So I'll just kind of lay out the uh, the premises here and uh, let you take it from there, Karen. Uh, but what it is is uh, Gary Hotels is the owner of the Comfort Inn, um, uh, Paint Turnpike North. Uh, they are proposing to build an additional hundred, approximately a hundred room hotel. Uh, in front of the Comfort Inn, which would be between the Applebee's and the Maplefields gas station. Um, and in order to accommodate that, they will need to move some of their parking behind the current Comfort Inn on 1.5 acres of land, which is uh, owned by the town, uh, part of the uh, town hall campus. Um, we are looking at, like I said, 1.5 acres of land uh, for a sale price of $1 million. Um, to us, you know, it's commercial value of the land is very minimal. It's unused land by the town. Uh, the sale of this land will not improve, impact town operations of the highway department or anything like that. And the town has no future plans for this land either. Um, Basically, this lot is landlocked uh, because the only current access to it is through the highway department yard, which means you'd have to navigate through the gravel and sand piles around the highway trucks, uh, the highway equipment, the grader, the loaders, um, you know, the large 18-wheelers as they're delivering sand and salt and everything like that. So, minimally, it has no independent commercial value. Uh, looking at similar lots along the Payne Turnpike that have frontage to uh, Payne Turnpike, uh, looking at about uh, similar sized lots, you know, looking at about $600,000 of value. Uh, so we think we are getting a uh, value here. But I will, I guess, Corinne, you had a question? Uh, Tom, I don't know if you can speak on that. Latest I heard from Green Mountain Transit is they're looking further down from the uh, state police barracks on, on that side of Payne Turnpike, unless I'm mistaken, Tom. Or you are correct. Okay, so yeah, they're, they're looking further down, not at this parcel of land. I'll turn it over to Karen. Thank you, Tour, and thank you, everybody, for coming this morning. Uh, just a quick note of who Geary is. Geary is a Boston-based company. Uh, we are uh, New England hotels. We have 50 hotels throughout New England. Um, we have uh, some independent resorts. We have some Marriott products, some Hilton products, some independents. Uh, we have choice hotels. We, we, we purchased the comfort suites here uh, approximately three years ago. 
Um, and with that purchase, there's like a truck, trucking, uh, where truckers park out in front. Uh, that's the parcel we're proposing that uh, we put a brand new hotel. Um, we love being here. We like being part of your community. We see a need um, for more hotel rooms. Um, we love Vermont. We're currently uh, building, we're, we're in a partnership in downtown Burlington where we're building the City Place project, which will be a 165 room Marriott hotel. Um, we're proposing this, uh, we're in conversations with Hilton uh, to have a Hilton Home Two Suites. Um, it's uh, an extended stay project product and uh, it's probably Hilton's most popular product. By background, um, I spent 35 years at Hilton doing hotel development, so uh, I've done a few projects in my life and uh, we think Home 2 fits in beautifully in this community. Um, you know, you're underserved in terms of hotel rooms and the comfort um, fills quite often and then people leave Berlin to go elsewhere for a hotel room. So this will satisfy the need if your new hotel rooms tax passes, there's some extra revenue there, but th there is revenue, um, there's employment, all kinds of great benefits for the town of Berlin. So um, John Grenier is here with me to answer any technical questions. I can answer big picture, but he is uh, our engineer on the project and has been a great help to all of us. Uh, uh, John lives in Waterbury and um, is very familiar with all the local requirements. So if you do have some technical questions, I would ask John to answer them. But big picture, I can answer anything about Geary, about our intentions, about our um, you know, our, our historical records and our future projects that we're involved with. And the other one is, what's going to be the access? Will there be any trucks, any vehicles coming in Shed Road, which is already going to be used, utilized? Um, and will the tractor trailers be sitting back there running their engines all night? At night, when atmospheric conditions are such, I'm literally sleeping, breathing diesel fumes because the trucks are parking illegally around Maple Fields. The signs say no parking, no parking, but they park there anyway. Nobody chases them away, but I'm breathing the fumes. I want to know where the tractor trailers are going to go and how the access to this 1.5 acres will work. Thank you. Of course. Um, no, the access will not be through Shed Road. It'll actually be blocked off. So any access to this hotel complex will be directly off Payne Turnpike. Um, basically, very similar to this entrance that is there now to get into the Comfort Inn, it will slightly go to the south, um, kind of adjacent to the stormwater pond that's there that goes up to the Tesla Park uh, charging station. So that'll become kind of the main boulevard. You come in, first hotel, second hotel, you go around behind the Comfort Inn, and there'll be a large parking lot back there. It'll be screened with trees, screened with berms. We'll set up truck parking back there because we need to replace that parking. But um, that location would actually be further away than, because yeah, you live right over the berm and the fence that's there behind the Comfort Inn. I mean, sorry, the Vermont Service Center. It's unfortunate that you're hearing, feeling, and like smelling that. This would be further away. And actually, because Geary owns the hotel, they have a lot more power to like have people not park with their engines running behind the hotel that they are at. So I think it'll be actually better managed than um, the gas station, which you know, wants those people there, but they don't really have an interest in stopping that practice from happening, whereas if you own the hotel, you want your guests to be happy as well. And it's not a big segment of demand for the hotel. We think some of that trucker, they'll, they'll be going elsewhere. I don't think they'll be staying with us. And we, you know, we, have, we, we will accommodate some trucker demand, but we imagine it will decrease. Just want to say, I'm glad you're looking at it. I totally agree. Um, and thank you for working in Berlin. We needed you. We need those. You know, obviously there's going to be some changes and whatnot, but thank you. But well, we're excited to be here, so thank you. Yes. I'm 
Greg Bean, and um, we live uh, at the end of Dodge Farm Road, where we're just above the wells for the town, some of the wells for the town, and I'm just wondering if we're sure there'll be enough water, especially with increasing droughts. I'm under the impression there's more than adequate capacity, but I'll let you tell them to talk to that. Yes, the Public Works Board has, which is in charge of the water and sewer, uh, does have more than enough capacity uh, to handle both sides with this project and the other uh, expanding projects you know, being mentioned in the town. And the Public Works Board is actually very excited uh, about this project and how it will actually help the uh, revenue lines on, on both the water and sewer companies. Yes, sir. Uh, Peter Sanders, I'm a Berlin resident. I'm uh, just wondering how the purchase price was determined and whether other options were considered, whether like you know, 99 increases in the bill. You know, how, how did you get to that number? So, in the financing environment today, leases are very difficult to do for hotels. For, it's really impossible to get financing with a lease. So, from a Geary perspective, it was a purchase. Um, it's only going to be a purchase or it wouldn't happen at all. And, and um, you know, we, we did a presentation to your board and we negotiated. You know, they pushed us a little bit more than we originally wanted to be at. But um, we want to be here and, you know, we're, we're a believers if, it, if we can make the numbers work and it works for the town too. So it, it's, it's a partnership and that's how we view it. to the Tesla charging station. There will be a reconfiguration because we're going to have to move some parking around, but um, it's encouraged by local zoning and a requirement of Act 250 to have those electric char charging stations. So they'll still be there. They might just be in a slightly different location. Okay, so that would mean the time that that charging station is down, correct? That would be true. Yep. When we have to move them, there will be a certain amount of time. I would hope that we could do that so that the new section was built and the new chargers were in place and then the circuits would be switched over. But yeah, there will be actual downtime. Okay, will it be easier or harder to access than where it's currently at? I think it'll be easier. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Ready to go on to the next start? Sir. Is this going to be a five-story hotel? Yes, yes, I believe that is the current design. If that is true, then will Berlin need a fire truck capable of reaching the fifth story? I believe that's been reviewed by the... Um, will we this need it? No. I believe the current fire apparatus is adequate like to handle this. Yeah, absolutely. We, we will be able to reach that. That will be the tallest we building in... Berlin. We will not need to buy additional fire equipment. No. Thank you. Uh, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Article 5. Thank you. Thank you. Shall the voters authorize required local match for July 2023 flooding repairs in the amount not to exceed $400,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed five years. Can you warm us up on that? So I touched on this uh, during the budget presentation. Um, you know, this was just to give us the, the select board, meaning the option of expanding these uh, expenses out over five years through the term of a loan. Uh, versus, you know, funding entirely through the property taxes of this year. Um, you know, Ann mentioned some uh, good news there with additional uh, state funding coming through. Um, the benefit of this is that, you know, it, it 
spreads these expenses out over five years. Uh, the downside to it is that you would accrue interest, uh, which uh, estimates right now today, if we were to execute those loans, would range from between 5 and 6%, which would add significantly to the overall cost of the, of the project. Um, so this is not a mandate that the town pursue these loans. It's just the uh, uh, authority to pursue them if that turns out to be in the best interest uh, of the town moving forward. Questions or comments? Yes. Just, just to clarify, the word financed means bond? Be a loan. Borrowed. Five-year loan. You, you had talked about get a bond but in a previous conversation, but you actually need a loan. Correct. Article 6, shall the town appropriate $420,296 to the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department for payment of necessary expenses from July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, so we have a lot of things in our budget. Um, oh, my name is Ryan Barr, um, Berlin lifelong resident, uh, six-year member of the fire department, um, currently serving as president, uh, previously vice president, um, and lieutenant on the fire department. Um, we have a couple of things on the budget that are out of our control, um, such as our insurance rate, uh, heating, um, some other things that have really um, gone up without us being able to control them. Um, that accounts for roughly 5.5% of our budget. Um, if you, um, there's a detailed version um, that wasn't included in the town report, uh, town packet, um, that's on that table. Um, we can definitely hand those out if anyone would like. Um, they were also on that back table as you came in. Um, some of those things um, that you will see changed um, are three thousand uh, dollars for fundraising. Um, one of our goals is to do a lot more fundraising, um, like tonight. Um, some other things: um, heating. You'll see a five thousand dollar increase um, that's out of our control. Uh, communication equipment. Um, one of the things that we, we really struggle with is, is having our communication. Um, sorry. Our dispatch um, has increased 4% for the last couple of years. Um, again, that has continued to uh, increase. Um, hose testing is one of the things that we put a lot of man hours into every year. Um, and when there's a company that comes in and does our other local towns, um, they offer a discount for coming in, um, so we'd like to hop on that and outsource our host testing. Um, it usually accounts for, for a lot of hours um, that we don't have as volunteers. Um, most of us have other day jobs. Most of us um, are involved in a lot more things like our chief on the select board, um, that kind of thing. <clears throat> So some of the bigger changes that you will see um, include our insurance. Um, we're looking for a $10,000 increase in that. Um, last year we introduced uh, paying on the weekends. Um, so currently our model is all volunteer. Um, we do have a stipend check and last year we introduced um, paying for four hours per day for two individuals. Um, so that's 16 hours per weekend of paid time. Um, the idea behind that is to get people in-house doing maintenance things that we might not be able to do outside um, on our normal Tuesdays, uh, which we show up for most Tuesdays. Um, so that $10,000 is, 7000 of that is workman's comp insurance. Um, that was introduced with the $25,000 um, for those weekend shifts. Um, so that, that's kind of just moving money into that line item instead of another line item. Um, 
those paid shifts will see a little uh, decrease on that line item as we move money from, from there to the insurance. Um, our year-end stipend is our biggest increase um, in terms of benefits. Um, our model right now is that we show up, we, we're all volunteer, and for every two hours we get one point, um, and then we divide those points by, by that um, lump sum of money at the end of the year. Um, a, last year I believe it came out to roughly $8 dollars um, per point, which is uh, for two hours, so $4 an hour. Um, and so we're looking to continue to increase that. Um, one of the things we struggle with is retention. Um, this past year we saw, I believe, six people uh, leave the department um, just for various reasons. Um, and we had four come in, so our numbers are decreasing, although slightly. Um, I think our current active roster is right around 15. Um, which is not a lot um, given uh, last year we amassed about 7,000 volunteer hours um, between the 15 people. Um, I know that some of them, um, like myself and Chief um, and our, uh, a bunch of other people in our department, have a majority of that. Um, I know Chief spent uh, right around 1,000 hours um, which comes out to 20 hours a week, if I do my math right. Um, so we're looking to increase that and hopefully recoup some of the, the time lost in terms of uh, monetary compensation. Um, our building maintenance is also um, going up. Uh, last year we spent $13,000 um, out of our uh, $8,500 budget. Um, our building was built in 1989, uh, our Four Corners Station and our Riverton Station in the 60s. Um, both of our buildings are showing signs of aging. Um, I know the, the outsides of the building, uh, the clapboards are, are aging, the flooring inside is showing signs of aging. Um, and we also had to replace a bay door, um, which accounted for about $6,000 out of that. Um, other questions? Thank you. That was Article 6. Now, Article 7. Shall the town appropriate $39,886 to the Kellogg Hubbard Library? Can you come up? I don't think I have enough line item. Hello. Um, I'm Ty Nixa Peterson. I live on East Road in Berlin. Um, with my husband Connor and my two-year-old daughter Verona and a baby on the way um, and I with Dan Green um, serve on the Board of Trustees for the Kellogg Hubbard Library. Um, uh, something I love personally about the library right now as a mom is going to story hour every week um, but it's such a great community resource for so many reasons not just for readers it serves six towns including Berlin um, and something I found really interesting is nearly 500 Berlin residents used the library last year and um, took out over 7,000 um, items. And that's not including digital items, um, which can't be tracked by town, so you can't look at that. But um, this year we're looking for um, a little over $39,000, which is um, a slight increase but we did not ask for an increase over the last few years, so this will be the first increase in a while. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Anyone have questions? You must have done a good presentation. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Overall, the 
budget, not blood related damages or anything. Like that. Thank you. Article 9, uh, Article 8, shall the town appropriate $21,600 to the Montpelier Senior Activity Center? Is there anyone to speak for that here? You could ask a question, but I don't know if we'd get an answer. Uh, go on to 9, shall the town appropriate $10,000 to the Berlin Corner Cemetery Association? We're reminded that it's not town owned. Questions? Any representative, first of all. Any questions? Could I point out something in their report? They gave a wrong email address to the Berlin Historical Society. The correct email address is a few pages later on the Historical Society report. That's a, a new or a, a better Historical Society email address if you go to their section of the report. And we'll be doing that later. Uh, to Article 10, shall the town appropriate $7,150 to the Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice? Ma'am. Hi, my name is Pat McDonald. I'm uh, standing to speak about Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. I was on the board for quite a few years. I'm not now, but I'm involved in two of their committees, and I love this organization. My sister, my mother, not me so far, knock on wood, but uh, they've taken advantage of their service, and more recently, my husband was in the hospital in Maine for seven weeks, and um, I called them and told them that we're gonna be home, and I know that he's gonna need some service. They came to my house. They told a friend of ours where to put the ramp, where to put the, um, the railings to go upstairs and downstairs, so we have, what do they call that, double double railings up and down the stairs, where all the, the grab bars and everything, and um, they were amazing. I also, as part of my job on one of the committees, went on house visits with the permission of their clients and saw firsthand the variety, the scope of the people that they deal with. The three people we met with that day were like all completely different with different problems and issues and they were spectacular. And um, it was quite a learning session for me, so I'm very proud to be part of this organization. And on page 62 of the book, they've got all of their um, numbers and statistics, which I chose not to read to you today, but there's a lot of activity, sadly, here in the town, and they're here for us. Um, and one more story, when we were coming home from, the, from Maine from the hospital, it was a weekend, I was very nervous about getting Bruce home in the house, and they arranged to have people there for me on a Saturday um, to make sure that we got him settled and comfortable in the house. So please vote yes. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Anything else on Article 10? Article 11. Shall the town appropriate $3,000 to the Central Vermont Council on Aging? And I believe there is a representative. Good morning, everyone. My name is Luke Rackers. I am a resident of Montpelier, so thank you for welcoming, here, welcoming me here today. Um, I am the Director of Community Engagement at the Central Vermont Council on Aging, uh, speaking on behalf of our agency today. Um, for over 40 years, we've been providing um, services to the uh, residents of Central Vermont, 54 towns across our service area, um, to help older adults uh, continue to live um, with dignity and choice in our communities, with the primary goal of helping people uh, remain in their homes um, and independent for as long as possible. So as you can imagine, we have a wide range of programs and services uh, to meet that mission. Um, including our helpline team, um, which provides information and assistance um, to thousands of people in Central Vermont every year. Um, we have nutrition programs. Um, all of the funding for Meals on Wheels goes through the Central Vermont Council on Aging, and we support 13 meal sites across um, our region. Uh, we have a st state health insurance program um, to provide um, health insurance counseling to residents, which is a great uh, benefit for those entering the Medicare system for the first time. 
Um, we also have um, our Family Caregiver Support Program, um, which provides individual support uh, for people who um, are caregiving for the first time. We have social opportunities and classes for caregivers. Um, I'm sort of just giving you a big, broad overview today, uh, but the bottom line is um, Central Vermont Council on Aging um, is, is here to support people as they age and caregivers in the community. Uh, we served um, 70 um, clients and um, 70 residents of Berlin um, last year um, with a variety of services, and um, the, the town funding uh, that we receive from 54 towns across the region uh, primar primarily supports our helpline team, our um, family caregiver support program, and our volunteer services. So happy to answer any questions, and I also have some material if you would like that today. Thank you. Article 12, shall the town appropriate $2,000 to Vermont to Washington County Mental Health. And there is a representative here. I was misled. <clears throat> Any comments or questions about these articles? I'm uh, happy to take your comments. If not, Article 13, shall the town appropriate $1,200 to the Central Vermont Adult Basic Education? Anyone? Article 14, shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Central Vermont Memorial Civic Center? Uh, no one? Does anyone have information on what that means? Uh, if you look, take your town report, there's a, there's a written report for almost every one of these that explain what they do and would probably suffice if they didn't have someone here. Uh, Let's see, Article 15, shall the town appropriate $1,000 to Downstreet Housing and Community Development? Ryan. Howdy, my name is Bill. I am a resident of Barry City, but I work over at Downstreet. I'm one of the home ownership specialists that helps people figure out down payment assistance and getting into their first homes. So for, you, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Downstreet, we create permanently affordable multifamily rental housing and own and operate 452 apartments and 85 manufactured housing lots with multiple projects in various stages of development to create new homes in central Vermont, Washington County, and Orange County as well. We provide a full array of home ownership services to over 200 households each year and steward and grow a portfolio of 165 permanently affordable houses. Uh, four of those homes are in Berlin, and we're always interested to add more. Uh, though our shared equity program, or sorry, through our equity, our shared equity program in Orange, Washington, and Lamoille County. In those same three counties, we also coordinate and provide supportive services to help our residents and local community members maintain housing stability, access community resources, and improve health and well-being. We serve over 600 families each year. And finally, we partner with community service organizations to support initiatives that provide housing that meets specialized needs or increases affordable housing in central Vermont. I am excited to share that this summer we will finally break ground on Fox Run, which will add 30 new affordable apartments to the town of Berlin. We expect these homes to be available for rent in summer of 2025. With this, this is our first multifamily building being in Berlin, and Downstreet is so appreciative of the town's support for this project and of affordable housing. I'm willing to accept questions. Where is Fox Run? Fox Run is going to be in the uh, mall area near the Walmart. Can you speak to the other four homes that are in Berlin and where they're located? Absolutely. So there are four shared equity homes throughout Berlin. Uh, they are privately owned by individual families. Uh, basically, Downstreet uh, provides a subsidy with the assistance of the Vermont Housing Conservation Board to make these homes permanently affordable. So the down payment stays with the home and grows uh, as it's passed on between families through sales. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Article 16, shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Washington County Diversion? Anyone to speak here? Welcome. Thank you. Ooh, sorry. Um, my name is Meg Rizzo. I am a 
East Corinth Town resident, so thank you for allowing me here. Um, I am the executive director of the Washington County Diversion Program. Um, Washington County Diversion is the oldest um, diversion program in the state, and we provide um, a variety of restorative justice services um, for all ages, from 11 to, I believe, my oldest person I served was 88 years old. Um, so we have six separate programs, um, court diversion for adult and youth. Um, we have a substance use safety program, which is all the underage drinking and marijuana tickets for the county. Um, we have a balanced and restorative justice program that works with the DCF involved in high risk youth. Um, a Tamarack program, which is just under the umbrella of diversion, but for folks with um, identified mental health or substance use disorders. And um, we offer pretrial services and intervention. So for people who are involved with the court system, who would benefit from um, maybe connection to mental health supports while they're waiting for court to happen. And additionally, we also have a civil program for, to help people get their driver's licenses back, um, which can be very difficult to navigate for many people. Um, we served a total of 485 people last year. 132 were from Berlin which was about 27% of um, our people served. So for um, $1,000 helps go a long way, providing our services uh, directly to clients. Um, they have high needs, and it takes a lot of time and support to get them through our program and um, to successfully address the issues that um, they came to us with and hopefully set them off in a better path. So we would appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Article 17, shall the town appropriate $975 to circle? Circle, anyone? 18, shall the town appropriate $800 to Family Center of Washington County? 19, shall the town appropriate $700 to Capstone Community Action? Welcome. 19. Hi, I'm Yvonne Laurie. I'm the Advancement Communications Manager at Capstone Community Action. So I'm here today just to request the support of Berlin residents. We are seeking level funding of $700, so we are not asking for an increase. Um, but I hope to really briefly offer you some brief history about the organization, a brief summary of what we do, and a little bit of how we've invested in Berlin residents in the last year. Um, so community action agencies are, were established by the Economic Opportunity Act in 1964. So we are celebrating 60 years of community action this year. Uh, Capstone is one of about a thousand nationwide and one of five in Vermont. Um, the, what's important about all of this is that the core funding for community action agencies comes through what's called the Community Services Block Grant. So this channels federal funds through the states um, into our local agencies, and then we use this to help create programs and services um, that address poverty and increase self-sufficiency. So nationally, about 10% of this funding um, is what we use to try to leverage and support additional funds from our communities that we serve. <clears throat> Um, so Capstone Community Action serves residents in Lamoille, Washington, and Orange Counties, as well as nine communities um, that are located in Windsor, Addison, and Rutland Counties. Um, our purpose is to improve the lives of Vermonters in need by providing opportunities, education, and vital assistance. By breaking down the barriers that prevent people from thriving, we offer the hope people need the dignity everyone deserves, and a better community for all. We accomplish our purpose by making ends meet, which is offering like food, shelter, and heating assistance. Uh, we build stronger families 
through our Head Start and Child Care Food programs. We create warm and welcoming homes through our weatherization and energy efficiency programs and open doors through economic opportunities through programs such as our savings and credit programs, free tax preparation, micro business development, uh, workforce development, which includes our community kitchen academy that we do in partnership with the Vermont Food Bank as well as our transportation programs. Um, in our last fiscal year, we served 11,492 individuals and 6,334 households. So specific to Berlin, um, what we've documented 308 individuals and 191 households were served. <clears throat> and so we're asking for support for all of the programs. Um, and as you'll see in the town report, we offer what's called our service report. So that's specific to your town. Um, we are still in the process of completing our annual report, which really highlights a lot of the other programs that are not featured in the service report. Um, so for example, a lot of our um, flood relief efforts, um, our transportation programs, and some additional programs that uh, we took up on during the last fiscal year. Um, I wanted to also mention that we updated our website towards the end of the pandemic. So we worked really hard to try to make it more accessible for folks. So that means trying to increase the visual impairment options, um, offering some translation services for non-English speakers um, who may access some of our programs. Um, and then just also, we're really trying hard to feature the educational opportunities we you know, share in the community. So for example, the micro-business programs, um, our financial literacy programs. <clears throat> um, and then I just also wanted to mention another program that is in, uh, featured in our annual report, which is the Vermont Everyone Eats program. Um, during the pandemic, a lot of our farmers and restaurants came together with us to be able to offer food to folks who've been just extremely um, in need of food. And so we were able to not only serve the food, but help create income for those individuals who are farmers and business owners, uh, such as restaurants, of course. Um, so we served over 86,000 meals in Washington County alone. And what was great actually about this program, as you know, COVID really slowed down, um, we, this, with the support of the state, we were able to transform the Vermont Everyone Eats program into Vermont Emergency Eats. So we served over 16,000 meals right after the July flooding. Um, so that's between August and October of 2023. Um, I just want to briefly mention that our organization was part of a board for the Main Street Flood Recovery Fund, and so a lot of our fundraising actually came through that opportunity. So we were able to give out about 285 grants, um, some to Berlin uh, businesses to help support them really get back on their feet in whatever way, shape, or form that meant. Um, and since then, we've also hired new staff for a statewide disaster case management program to offer this program to flood survivors. And so this is specific to those who fit under the FEMA guidelines, but are also, um, we're, you know, this funding's in sync with the partnership of the state of Vermont. Uh, we continue to support and sustain the unhoused in our area, um, doing a lot of advocacy work, and thankfully a lot of our constituents are here um, who make that work happen. And also, um, three more things. <laughs> uh, right now we have our Feel Your, Na Feel Your Neighbors campaign, which is a 100-day campaign to help raise funds for our emergency food and heating assistance programs. And our goal for this year is uh, $325,000, and we are just shy of that, and it ends on March 6th. So if you or anybody has resources we would love the support to make that happen because obviously we're seeing a lot more need um, given the challenges of the flooding and such. And then two more things I want to make sure I mention is we have numerous openings 
in our Head Start programs. So if you know of families or children under the age of five, they could be eligible. Um, so I encourage you to go to the website and learn about that criteria. And lastly, um, our no-cost weatherization program has more funding, um, and so we are offering folks a greater eligibility, and we are seeking more applicants for that service. So I think that's it. Um, any questions? All right. You're welcome. I feel like it's... Oh, okay. <laughs> Article 20, shall the town appropriate $600 to Good Samaritan Haven? Anyone to speak for the Good Samaritan Haven? Uh, 21, shall the town appropriate $500 to the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation? No, you don't run. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Hello, my name is Abby Denny. And I am a Berlin resident. I live right down the road. And after the July flood, I got a job. And I had never heard of this organization before in my life, so I thought I'd come here and tell you about us, because maybe you haven't heard of us either. So the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation is a nonprofit. We're primarily funded through the state municipal funding. That's why I'm here. And um, through our membership dues from other business owners. And our main impetus is to attract and retain good paying jobs in central Vermont. So the way that we do this is through a variety of programs. And we have a staff of three people that work in Montpelier. And the nice thing about us is we offer a huge variety of free services for business owners or people who are curious about entrepreneurship. Much like Capstone, we refer a lot of people to you. So we work in tandem. Um, we're absolutely free. So. We also provide information about funding, whether it's federal or state. Um, we talk to the legislature about some of our data findings. Um, of note this year, uh, we, we spent a good deal of time with Berlin's thoughtful zoning administrator, um, Thomas Badowski, who has been excellent in developing ideas for projects together. Um, we were pleased to see the town of Berlin's Scott Hill Loop project rank high on the annual regional project priority list. And we continue to work closely with you on this project, apparently. I'm the executive assistant. Our director couldn't be here today, so forgive me. This is my first one. Um, and it's in my, my town, so bear with me. <laughs> um, we count three Berlin businesses as loan clients, um, which are supported by our office through site visits, annual technical assistance awards, grant writing support, and business counseling. Um, we offered three site tours for businesses interested in relocating to Berlin, and we hope to continue this work. Finally, we supported six grant applications for Berlin residents in uh, fiscal year 23, and we were most proud to see a fitness center we worked with receive a retroactive grant that reimbursed them for the hard work and capital they invested in their business during COVID. So that was in FY23. However, when I jumped on, I was working in something called the Business Flood Recovery Center because the business that I worked for flooded, and I was bored. So um, one of the things, <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Um, and I loved it. I loved working with local businesses because businesses are people, you know, that's if without business, we don't have jobs and then, you know, life is hard. So we're here to help businesses. And during the flood, um, we basically counseled businesses that didn't know where to go or what to do. So um, the way we did that was through active listening. Uh, we made documentation of damage. We prepared data reports for our partners. We prepared physical damage reports. We investigated and reported scams. Uh, we supported filing unemployment claims, because those can be daunting. Uh, we assisted in outreach to experts and partners, like Capstone. Uh, we supported uh, contractor referrals, transportation services. We provided translation services for some of our new American clients. Uh, we did site visits to businesses. I went to Ellie's farm, and it was really, really sad. But it was really cool to meet them in person and talk to them about what they needed and then bring that back to the state in our data so that hopefully we can get some money, right? Because that's what we need. Um, we helped a lot of people fill out the BGAP grant, which was supposed to be easy, but turned out it wasn't. Um, we support with securing necessary documentation for folks, uh, filing Secretary of State business filings. I could go on. We do a lot. I have some brochures right over there. Um, there's a QR code to our website. You can call us anytime. I'll answer the phone and tell you 
uh, hopefully what you need to know, or find a person who knows what you need to know. Um, yeah, so does anybody have any questions? I mean, this list is long, and we've been here for a while, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Thank you. Do you know who the CVEDC is now? Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice to see you all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Article 22 shall the town appropriate $500 to community harvest of central Vermont. Hello, I'm Peg Monley. Um, community Harvest of Central Vermont is the coolest thing going for people who need fresh local food, who have no money, or people who want to volunteer and do good work, or people who, like we did 10 years ago, we have three pear trees, and they were massive. You couldn't reach the fruit. They were overloaded, boughs bending down. We, gave, we put on front porch form, everybody come and get as many pears as you want. People came. They were still loaded with pears. And then someone said, hi, I work at Community Harvest of Central Vermont. Can we come get your pears? They took every pear in the tree. 12 volunteers came. They have 331 volunteers last year, 25 volunteers from Berlin. They, they have pro we got thank you notes from elementary school kids, so cute. We got thank you notes from senior um, centers where people used our food. It's just the loveliest program. They are now quite large. They've served 2 million, 2.3 million servings so far since in the 10 years that they've been around. They started out tiny. They're now growing. They have workspace. It takes a lot to distribute. All the work is volunteer, except you. once you get big, you need, you need a little system to support yourself. So they're asking for $500. I donate every month a little bit. You can do that, too. It's a great program. I highly recommend them. If you have fruit trees, call them. They'll come help you. Thank you. Thank you, Peg. Thanks, Peg. Article 23, shall the town appropriate $500 to Mosaic Vermont, formerly the Sexual Assault Crisis Team of Washington County? Hi, I'm Debbie Sanguinetti, a Berlin resident, and I'm on the board of Mosaic Vermont, our Sexual Assault Crisis Team. These are one of the essential services in our community you don't always hear about until you really need the service. I also work for the Vermont Department of Health and as a nurse, and these are some of the services that we call on when we have our rough times, we have families in crisis, we have a helpline, we're now doing some work in the schools to do preventive care and discussion about how do you have healthy relationships so you don't get into the crisis mode. So your support is very much appreciated. Thank you. Article 24, shall the town appropriate $500 to Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired? Uh, 25, shall the town appropriate $300 to Good Beginnings of Central Vermont? We have a representative here, or? My notes said we did. And this last article on the free town meeting, 26, shall the town appropriate $250 to OUR House of Central Vermont. That concludes the unvoting section of this article, of this day, and it's, if you need it, we could take a stretch break or we could go directly on to the town meeting. And Anne, you would like to have a moment to talk? Well, we're in a, a space between pre-town and town meeting, so you, you may speak if, unless we want to of course. Uh, 
Hopefully most of you are able to see our, our bi-weekly or weekly from one of the other of us updates, but a couple of quick notes. Um, I mentioned before the Budget Adjustment Act passed uh, yesterday, and that did include an extension of the hotel motel program uh, till the end of the fiscal year in June. Um, big issue here in Berlin because of Hilltop Inn. Um, I, I want to note that um, th the House version did a mega expansion of that program. The Senate version, which is what's adopted finally, brings it back to where it was before. And from a year ago, there has actually been a successful 50% um, reduction in people who were in that COVID program and who have now moved, and many of them into permanent housing. Um, there's always the bad actors in any human endeavor, and I know some of those have been part of the situation in Berlin, and I'm going to leave it to Ken is on the Judiciary Committee, so there's some updates on what uh, the attempts are to try to address the issues at the mall and, and uh, theft and so forth. Um, the transportation bill was just voted out of committee, and you never know till you really see it, but the progress right now is this year's budget finally does include the full funding for the full repaving uh, all the way through West Berlin, Route 12, between uh, Northfield and Montpelier. Um, there is a bill um, uh, on advance notice to people uh, who are, for instance, buying homes, that guess what? Your home is in an area that has had flooding before, not something was mandated. Uh, Ken and I had a bill introduced specific to if you're renting a lot in a mobile home park, that you actually, they're mandated to give you that notice, and that is being incorporated into that bill. So that's good news. Um, I heard the, re the uh, presentation by the Central Vermont Council on Aging, which includes a uh, discussion of what we sometimes call the Medicare cliff. You go on Medicare and all of a sudden you lose uh, supports for your health care because the standards are different, the, uh, the uh, finance standards. I first learned about that when I turned 65 and talked with them about my Medicare choices. Um, and finally this year there is a bill to fill in some of that gap. That is the one bill that's in there that I support, even though it will be a, a budget impact. I think it's critical that we address that hole in our system. Um, and my last note, affordability in housing remains our huge concern. Um, I'll be around afterwards uh, to talk a lot about the, um, the education fund and what some of the details are on that and the huge increases people are uh, facing this year, but that's not really part of the, the uh, town budget components here. So please feel free to come and ask questions. So hi, I'm Ken Golson. I'm your other state rep. Um, just uh, and touched on most of it. Uh, yesterday in our, in our House Judi Judiciary Committee, we uh, passed out a bill for retail theft that hopefully is going to cut down on some of this. Uh, but um, the, the fact still remains, we have so many people that uh, go to court or don't show up to court and are still the same bad actors that keep doing things over and over. Um, we've already touched on, uh, on uh, probably the biggest local problem that, that we have in town that contributes to that, whether it's over here at the mall or, or up here at the travel center or, or whatever, we're trying to hopefully get somewhere on that. Um, the public safety issue is is my one of my number one priorities along with, with the affordability. There's really, uh, not to be Debbie Downer here, but there's not really a lot of affordable things here in Vermont right now. Um, I will say, Last year's devastation uh, with the flood, um, I don't think it's over yet. I think we're um, probably going to get hit again. And there's never enough money, and uh, there's a lot of 
a lot of uh, hopeful things that were going to come out of FEMA, and, and uh, I wasn't at all happy with that, and unfortunately, um, I still remain uh, not happy with that. There's going to be a lot more money uh, that's going to be spent. Uh, your clean heat standard is going to cost, uh, I think it's like a billion dollars more if that uh, continues to go through. Basically, what we all need to do is we all need to work together and we need to find a balance that works for as many people as we possibly can in Vermont. And I don't want to take any more of your time. If you've got any questions, be more than happy to answer and I will be here after. Um, and I already said we, we give weekly updates um, of what's going on on Front Porch Forum and uh, the, well, the Northfield News and, and also on our Facebook pages. But um, I will say this is my sixth year of, of serving as your state rep. It has been an honor and, and appreciate your support. And these people here and everybody that's involved in making all of our towns better do a tremendous job. Highway, they always get beat up. They do, uh, they do the best job they can with the, the money, as you can see. Money is always taken out of the transportation fund. That's where you're always hit first and foremost. And, uh, and it always costs you a lot more in the end to fix it. So that's it. I'll be around afterwards if anybody's got anything that you don't want to ask me now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks.